My name's uh, Dr. Andrew Hyland. I'm a scientist at Roswell Park. I've worked there for 15 years, trying to figure out a way so that uh, we don't have to see so many people coming in through the hospital to try to prevent cancer. And, uh, uh, you know, my basic premise is that tobacco products are lethal, addictive products. They should not be available on every street corner, ready access 24-7, uh, with uh, ubiquitous advertising uh, uh, throughout these locations. Uh, I, just to briefly touch on a couple of the points just raised, state licensing, yes there are state licenses, they do absolutely nothing to address any of these issues, outlet density, advertising near schools, uh, th the state licenses are, do, are not relevant for this discussion. The FDA uh, allows, it, it, it is created to enable this sort of local level decision making before the FDA law you were preempted. You, you, Damone, you could not introduce legislation like this because it was preempted. So, in fact, the FDA law facilitates the kind of discussion and, and fact finding and sharing that we're having now. Uh, uh, it, we've done some research looking at the availability of tobacco products. Just briefly, there's just under 400 tobacco outlets in uh, in the city, and uh, they're ubiquitous uh, in terms of uh, the, the cigarette retailing, tobacco retailing. 98 percent of the uh, stores we visited, we've gone to hundreds of locations over the years in 2006, 2008, 98 percent of them uh, uh, have tobacco advertising and the average amount of tobacco advertising in a typical location is 25 instances, 25 of those ads plastered throughout. We're talking about wallpaper where uh, people come in, kids come in, uh, so it's ubiquitous. Uh, in almost 400 uh, retail outlets in the city, talk about how many churches there are, let's put that in perspective, or markets or community centers. You're talking about the, the vehicle that, that uh, leads the distribution of the uh, product relative to other more community building uh, services and, and locations. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, this has been brought up, but tobacco outlets are more densely concentrated in low income areas. We're talking about a two and a half fold increase from the poorest neighborhoods compared to the, the wealthiest neighborhoods in the city. And uh, uh, when you look at within schools, uh, areas within schools, two thirds of schools have at least one tobacco outlet within just 1,000 feet of that location, really reinforcing the points that had been made before. And uh, uh, just to introduce into, onto the record here, this uh, a video, Stop Targeting Kids, that was produced at Roswell Park in collaboration with uh, Peter Ostro, uh, really documenting how the tobacco industry is the vehicle uh, to uh, promote the advertising toward kids and to get them hooked and uh, so that they can basically have profit generating uh, folks for many years to come. And then the third item uh, is that sometimes an argument is raised that if you limit the number of tobacco outlets near schools, say within a thousand feet, it's been proposed here, that is a, it is essentially a de facto ban on uh, places where uh, tobacco advertising and the, the retailing of tobacco products. Uh, I've heard arguments that as much as 90% of outlets would be covered under such, such a provision. Uh, so we took a look at the data. If you actually look within 1,000 feet of the schools in the city of Buffalo, one third of the tobacco outlets licensed in the city right now fall within that, that area. So all, all this law would do is really, uh, uh, it would gradually shift the balance of concentration of outlets from right now where it's in poor areas and where there's schools uh, away from those areas over time. And as someone, uh, myself who works in a cancer center where every day I see firsthand the toll that tobacco places on individuals but also their families uh, uh, it, who live in our community, it makes absolutely no sense to me that tobacco products are the most available and advertised products in our stores. And I, I commend uh, uh, Damone Smith for his initiative in, in uh, raising this issue and getting the dialogue going. Thank you.